So clinicians have a way to manipulate the immune system if the immune system is bad for us, if its activity is bad. So we're talking about immunosuppressive drugs. Why do individuals take immunosuppressive drugs? Could be for many reasons, many of which revolve around hypersensitivity reactions. The immune system is out of control. It is attacking when it shouldn't. It's causing damage, discomfort, and possibly serious damage and could cause death. So we need a way to suppress the immune system. So uh, this is um, occurring usually during autoimmune reactions. Sometimes we want to suppress the immune response if the immune system is attacking ourselves. Allergic reactions, when the immune system is reacting against pollen, let's try to suppress the immune system so it's not so uncomfortable. Uh, transplant rejection. So if the immune system is attacking a donated kidney, we might want to suppress the immune system so it stops donating, uh, stops attacking that donated organ. Or finally, uh, sometimes during a natural pathogenic infection, the immune system in its goal of ridding the body of the pathogen starts damaging the body. So there's a lot of collateral damage, and sometimes we want to suppress the immune system so that there's not so much damage to the host. So we'll talk about a few different uh, mechanisms of suppressing the immune system using drugs. The most common uh, immune suppressive compounds are steroids. Now when we say steroids, we're talking about um, compounds that are hydrophobic, that um, originate from cholesterol in the body, and that act as hormones. Uh, steroids are a class of hormones, testosterone, estrogen, progesterone. The steroids that we're talking about here for suppressing the immune response are a natural set of steroids called corticosteroids. So if you remember from your freshman biology courses, uh, corticosteroids are natural hormones that are released by the adrenal glands. So here I've drawn a kidney. Sitting on top of the kidney are the adrenal glands. Uh, the adrenal glands are have two layers, the inner layer, the adrenal medulla, the outer layer, the adrenal cortex. So corticosteroids are natural hormones made by the adrenal cortex, uh, and um, their natural function is to suppress the immune system in order to help raise blood glucose levels. So they're glucocorticoids. But in this uh video, we're talking about their role in suppressing the immune system. Let's see how they do that. So the adrenal cortex uh, synthesizes hormones called corticosteroids, uh, and more specifically, they're known by names such as cortisol or hydrocortisone. So those are the naturally produced corticosteroids released by the adrenal cortex. There are synthetic um, corticosteroids. They are synthesized in the lab based on the structure of cortisol or hydrocortisone. So, for example, prednisone, that is a synthetic um, corticosteroid. So, it mimics the same, a similar structure and has the same function as cortisol or, cortic or hydrocortisone. So, these are compounds that um, you maybe have heard of before. Uh, you can go to a pharmacy and buy a cream, buy a, a hydrocortisone cream, and apply that cream to your skin if you have a rash or if you have some immune response. There are inhaled steroids where individuals who have asthma, for example, asthma being an autoimmune uh, disorder, no, sorry, not autoimmune, um, uh, allergic reaction, uh, hypersensitivity, inhaling steroids will suppress the immune response in the lungs. Uh, some individuals who have inflammation in their joints get a cortisone shot. Now, the cortisone shot is injecting um, these corticosteroids into the joints to reduce inflammation. So there are many uh, different permutations. So these can be um, uh, rubbed onto the skin, they could be injected, they could be inhaled. Right? So let's see how um, corticosteroids work to suppress the immune response. So here's a cell. And I've drawn some DNA in the cell. There's a gene, and there's the promoter for that gene. So remembering from your basic biology or genetics, their promoters regulate the expression of genes. So it turns out steroids regulate the expression of genes as well. So steroids um, enter a cell by passing through the plasma membrane. Steroids are very hydrophobic molecules, so they have the ability to pass through the lipid bilayer of the plasma membrane and enter the cytoplasm of cells. 
uh, what's in the cytoplasm of cells? Steroid hormone receptors. So you can see that drawn there. When steroids bind steroid receptors, like um, cortisone or hydrocortisone or cortisol, when they bind the re their receptor, or when prednisone will bind that same receptor, it causes the steroid hormone receptor to go to the nucleus and bind promoter regions of genes. So steroids uh, trigger steroid receptors to bind the promoters and turn genes on. So most uh, steroid hormone receptors are in fact transcription factors that are activated by the binding of their ligand, which is the steroid. So how are these corticosteroids suppressing the immune system? Well, when these genes tur get turned on, these genes, um, they have many functions, and many of their functions involve suppressing the immune response. So we're turning genes on that counteract the ability to activate the immune response. So let's see what that means. So when steroids help turn these genes on, that will lead to a decreased production of many cytokines produced by immune cells. So we've covered in past videos all of these cytokines. So when steroids bind steroid receptors and turn, these, turn a bunch of genes on, these genes are responsible for decreasing the production of cytokines. And what kind of cytokines do we have here? IL-1 and TNF-alpha, if you recall, those are responsible for increased vascular permeability and activating the endothelium so that immune cells can enter the uh, um, inflamed site. So decreasing those are gonna decrease inflammation. IL-4 and IL-5 um, are involved in um, helper T cells, uh, activating other cells such as B cells. So if you reduce those, you're going to reduce the T cell response. GMCSF, that's a cytokine that goes to the bone marrow to tell the bone marrow to produce more granulocytes and monocytes. So we're going to have less of this uh, cytokine, which means less immune cells. CXL8 is a chemokine, which attracts cells such as neutrophils to inflamed sites. Now we're going to have less neutrophil um, uh, uh, extravasion. So steroids reduce the production of reduce the production of cytokines, and that's going to, of course, reduce the immune response, reduce inflammation. The other thing that steroids do in this process is they decrease the production of adhesion molecules and uh, proteins found on the surface of endothelial cells. So again, during inflammation um, and during an immune response, cells that are swimming by in the um, bloodstream, they bind molecules present on uh, the endothelial cells of inflamed tissues. So the immune cells stop, bind, and then can enter the inflamed tissues and do their own thing, which is promote their uh, own immune reactions. So now we have less of those immune uh, cells in there because we have fewer adhesion molecules on the surface of endothelial cells. Uh, lastly, uh, steroids um, in triggering these genes that turn on lead to a decreased production of prostaglandins and leukotrienes. These, if you recall, are molecules made in granulocytes such as mast cells. Leukotrienes are very potent inflammatory mediators similar to histamine. They trigger increased vascular permeability and vasodilation, so again, more inflammation. So when steroids are present, leukotriene production decreases. So inflammation decreases. Prostaglandins, those are responsible for inflammation as well as pain signaling. So steroid presence, less prostaglandins, less inflammation, less pain. So these are steroids. And this is how they function to suppress the immune response. There are side effects of steroids. Um, they should not be taken for long periods of time because they can have detrimental effects on the body that have nothing to do with the immune system. But this is how steroids work. They suppress the immune response via decreasing the production of cytokines, decreasing, decreasing adhesion proteins that would lead to decreased infiltration of immune cells to inflamed sites and decreased productions of inflammatory mediators such as prostaglandins and leukotrienes.